Thank you. I've hidden pictures behind me because when you're debugging things sooner or later, you need something nice to look at. Uh, they will be relevant later on. Thomas wants a dog picture instead. No. What? No, I was. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't listen. Kittens, kittens make you feel better. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this, is, this is something I was. I got really stuck with, and I just used place kitten to put some kitten pictures in there nice. to make me feel better about it. So we're probably gonna run like ten minutes after nine. We'll try to be quick. Yeah. Um, so, scenario. You've written some code, or actually someone else there. probably has. Uh -huh. He does everything. <laughs> cool. Um, layout isn't what you want it to be. What do you do? Thomas? Hang on. Maybe, maybe you should um, just like, what, what, what is this even about? Like, what, what is... <laughs> like, you know, like, sort of in 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 introduce the topic. I mean, what, 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 what are you even... What is this? Like, what is debugging CSS? What does that mean? Like, because it's a, to me, it seems like a fairly broad kind of. Well, you've got a visual problem, basically. Mm -hmm. Something's mm -hmm. not rendering quite how you'd expect it to yeah. render. Mm -hmm. um, your development browser of choice is probably the one that you're looking at at the time. <laughs> you might be further on in the dev process. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. um, but what's your first thing that you're actually going to get stuck into? Something's not quite right. Yeah. So what do you do? Right click on it, inspect. <laughs> but that's, that's a good start. That's um, a good, and then you see like a bunch of things and you change a bunch so of things. So basically you're looking <laughs> at um, what the browser thinks it's rendering. Yeah. And what's actually going on. Yeah. Um, the code looks wrong, then it's easy enough to go fix it. No. If the code looks right and you think it's something else is wrong, what do you do now? Okay, I have something because I I don't want to start because I'll just keep no, talking. Okay, yeah, thank you. So usually, like, why right click inspect and then change something in the browser to see until it's fixed, and then yeah. I fix that in the actual code sometimes through copy paste. Why that works for me very well is because I rarely use CSS in multiple places on the same page. I don't create like massively deep inheritance stacks of CSS. So, meaning my componentization of CSS reusage, or however you want to call it, is rather minimal. So it's usually you can just fix that CSS and you're going to be fine. You're not breaking much else. That's how I do it. So I'm, I'm rather careful with which CSS rules I reuse or inherit through my DOM tree in that sense. So that makes it, I guess, a bit easier. Actually, if you can close the JavaScript bit, because we don't need that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'll let you have the time to do it. <laughs> Just get rid of that whole thing. Yeah. <laughs> Just scroll to the top so we don't see the kittens anymore. Oh, the kittens will always be there. So here's the scenario. Um, basically, you want to constrain the width of this input field. Um, your first port of call is to try, um, what is the first port of call? Just restricting the, the parent. Uh, actually, the first one's got no constraints, so you might put a max width on the thing. Um, I'm using inline block to actually make sure it will have a width, because normally form fields are inline. It's not rendering correctly, it's not at the width that's expected to be. So what do you do now? This is when things get hard in CSS. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, so, form, form fields suck, right? Yeah. I let him use oh. this as an arbitrary example because it could yeah. be pretty much anything. Yeah. So I mean, my approach. I'm, I don't have a exact answer for this, um, just because. Uh, I mean, CSS is like it's you know it's, it's rather complicated sort of language, and so it, it, I don't think anybody can just like look at something and go, oh, you know. Obviously, just from the without looking at the, you know without looking at the CSS and without looking at how the uh, the DOM has constructed itself, uh, you know you can't easily diagnose what that, that issue is. Whenever I'm trying to figure out what the hell's going on in CSS, uh, and I assume that this is pretty much how everybody does CSS, yeah, just trial and error. You open the panel, 
turn things on and off again. Uh, change some values. Yeah, I mean, because sometimes one of the things which happens is like you'll change stuff and nothing happens, and that that's usually when you start to get a bit um, worried. Question. If you're looking at if you're looking at sizes, you usually you want to look at the bottom model pen or on your inspector. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And also because it's forms, forms are nasty because the fact that forms are nasty because forms are nasty. Mm. Yeah. No, because they still, because they, because your browser has its own user agents, style sheets, and that one for forms is quite extensive. Uh, things like box sizing, for example, is different for forms usually for legacy reasons. Mm-hmm. So if you want to check the normalization style sheet mm-hmm. to check if it's the box sizing is reset properly for the yeah. forms, and then your box model panel, obviously. Wasn't there a good talk on forms by somebody called Chris <laughs> from two years ago? I've huh. been writing forms for longer than anyone should. And it's, <laughs> you see that yeah. Twitch kind of developing. Yes. Yeah, it's not fun. Um, Another thing which uh, I'll, I'll try to do is make sure I actually understand what's going on. So like if I open that panel and, uh, you know, sure, maybe it looks visually correct, um, but if when you start inspecting things, uh, you've got bits poking out of other bits, and like, uh, you know, this is awesome. yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. If if the if you've got containers which are being exploded and all this kind of stuff, uh, this is usually uh, it's very difficult to work in an environment where the, you know where it's being rendered messy. So I usually try to like yeah understand what's going on, make sure it's sort of nice and clean before I go any further. Um, C- can I do yeah. a quick survey? Uh, anybody using BEM? One, two, <laughs> three. Yes. Come on, don't be shy. Uh, it's not bad. Really you put your hand up. <laughs> you, you'll have happy Russian friends. It's, it's good. It was created by Yandex, so I'm just making yeah. fun of that. Um, Did they steal it from the Democrats in the US? Or? No. Uh, <laughs> who, is, who is using... A, any kind of componentization assistance that kind of tries to, through post CSS or any kind of pre-compiler, componentize CSS, like CSS modules maybe being the most popular one these days. <laughs> one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, who doesn't use CSS? Just to have a... <laughs> <laughs> one, two, Let's get a base level here. Yeah. Okay, what does everybody else use? You just freestyling? Oh, oof, track. Boots. Uh, <laughs> that's that's, that's I mean, one more for not using do, do CSS. Do you want to join the panel? <laughs> <laughs> because you might have unique answers on how to debug CSS. <laughs> there might like, be violence if you join the panel. Because like. I've never used Bootstrap, and I'm not quite sure I'll never will, because I fear debugging CSS with Bootstrap. Debugging. Okay, I can talk firsthand of debugging CSS with Bootstrap. Okay. What you do is you work out what's going wrong, you fix it. And then you realize that Bootstrap is actually doing something completely contrary to good sense. So you end up fixing the thing for Bootstrap and writing your own custom code on top of it. And then you, and then you wait until Bootstrap changes something and then your custom code doesn't work anymore and then you hate the world um, and you'll probably burn something. Great. That's my I, first-hand I, experience. I anyway. slowly understand why the creator of Bootstrap doesn't do talks anymore. <laughs> <laughs> My experience with Bootstrap was, is that uh, the whole thing is supposed to be going to pick and choose what you use. <coughs> you want to use Bootstrap, so what I use is what I usually do is I use Bootstrap says, and I just comment out all the components which I don't want. So if I if I was going to hate the buttons, I just comment out the line that imports the buttons that are my own. That's fine. It also saves you. It also saves a bit of size, not really that much, but yeah. And secondly, you sort of have to like the parts which Bootstrap does, you don't want to do anything to them. That means you don't want to write your you don't want to overwrite Bootstrap styles. Instead, you want to uh, customize the variables. Yeah. Bootstrap. I think that's uh, sort of a, a good practice overall. Like if you've got some kind of, uh, if you're using some system to help you, and then you end up overriding, you know, large amounts of that system, or even just even just once, that's sort of where you know broken windows. Uh, yeah. Anytime you're overriding stuff, that's uh, a bad bad news. Uh, I've had I've had a Bootstrap project where there was more code <coughs> undoing what Bootstrap was doing than Bootstrap was actually doing. Just uh, just do the variables. If, you're, if, yeah. you're, if you find yourself overriding, then you probably want to comment that line out and then just write your own styles mm. because there's no point in fighting Bootstrap. The, the problem with a lot of CSS modules is namespacing or lack thereof mm. because everything in CSS is global unless you're Sebastian using CSS modules. Yeah. 
Because it, generally speaking, CSS is global. Um, if you have a framework and it does something in a global namespace, you have problems. Hmm. Bootstrap does things in a global names namespace. So even if you just use one little bit of Bootstrap, you've tainted your entire hmm. browser. Can I pick you up on the <laughs> web components? If you want to reuse a bit of CSS from one web component in other web components, is there a way to do that? Like no. Yeah. Well, I mean, <laughs> you copy and paste. Like, yeah, let's say you have a style on how a header looks like, in, or a header font looks like in a web component, and you want to reuse that in another web component, like to have like a standard header style in different components. How would you do that in web components? Uh, so, I generally avoid that completely, <laughs> like a pattern of reusing across files. Okay. I just have a very particular way of writing CSS where I take all the HTML elements and write an equivalent selector then write the properties, and so you never share across, because it's all namespace by selector, nice. now by mm -hmm. element. Yeah. Um, say you did want that, it would be like you're including a, a CSS library in multiple components, right? So you mm -hmm. do that, not like you do it across multiple pages. Yeah. So you're completely enca enca encapsulated as a page holder. I see. Okay. You can use imports as well, like if if yeah. you've got a file that you want to share stuff. But again, same, same thing applies as, uh, as before, it's it's better to use variables than to um, pull stuff in uh, yeah, yeah. that way. Uh, so I only know the way how to do it in CSS modules, which I like, which is the composers keyboard, the keyword, mm -hmm. where I, for those that have used CSS modules, you might be familiar with. For those that you aren't, you can in any CSS class definition say composers, and then you reference a class from a different file, and because it's all pre-compiled, it will like assign both classes from that one file and from the one file you're currently in at the element in the end. So that still makes it super easy to debug because you can kind of see from which file it's applying the styles in the output because there are two classes now on the element. Uh, that makes it really quite nice uh, to work and I pull in styles. So we have like shared CSS module files that just have stuff that you want to use in other components and you just put all of those variables, like you could use it like variables, right? You just say I have a color like font in like a shade of blue and wherever I want that font color applied, you compose from that file into any other CSS module that you want. So what's the difference with CSS modules doing that and applying, just applying multiple classes directly? Right, you can do that. <laughs> you need to import the different files though. And I was just wondering how that works, well, so right? Conceptually, uh, th I think the answer is um, that CSS modules, I believe, um, has the order that you compose them in um, is the order that the styles are applied, yeah. and that's not true for normal CSS. So the the order that styles are applied with CSS is um, totally dependent on the order that they I appear in the CSS file. Yeah, well, I imported. <laughs> yeah, so it, this can lead to like uh, you know confusing. I mean, non-deterministic things happening as well. Like if, if you're if you're pre if you're whatever you're using, you, you you plug some other plugin in, or you require things in a different way, something can end up in a different part of the file, and then you know suddenly everything's red. We don't know why, um, and that's one thing that CSS modules does solve. I have a question for people, the many who don't seem to use any BEM or anything along those lines. If anyone can answer. Um, when things go pear-shaped, how do you actually work it out? I'm curious, because I've been using namespacing for a very long time. I use implicit namespacing. I it's not explicit. It's not bad. It's going to use the system. I just implicitly have these. Well, there, there are lots of variations. If you listen to Jonathan Snook, who's written Smacks, um, Harry Roberts, um, with his basic namespacing, Yandex, they're all basically doing the same thing. And they all say that about each other. None of them will say bad things about each other other than that it's basically, well, this is my way. Mm -hmm. That's more or less the same. I mean, even just pause for a moment as I say something good about Bootstrap. They actually use um, a decent naming structure within their system, so it's pretty easy to work out what's going on if you're trying to override it um, or make it work properly. A good one, uh, I find, is uh, star space open curly bracket um, outline, 
colon, space, 1px, solid, <laughs> blue, semicolon, close, curly, bracket. As in, apply uh, an outline to everything on the page. And this can be a good way of going, oh, you know, that's what's going on. Um, and the reason why you use outline as opposed to border is because border adds an additional pixel if you're in um, the, norm, the default box sizing mode, which adding that additional pixel can uh, like Great. completely change the layout. Um, so um, outline is a really good way of um, sort of having a read-only way of analyzing where the edges of the of everything is without having to go in and manually inspect everything. Yeah, wasn't well, there also this 3D inspector in Firefox? Oh yeah, that thing's neat. Where you yeah. can look at the DOM depth uh, yeah. in 3D. I and think you I look at the Facebook button and it's like <laughs> you know, 20,000 <laughs> items deep. The tower yeah. of Facebook. Yeah. You <laughs> start actually talking talk about pixel. What if you're going to design for different screen sizes? Ah, pixels versus RAM versus everything else. Oh, it's yeah. a talk on, on the toe. The quick answer is a pixel is now a variable unit of measure. Mm. It used to be not, but now it is. So you can just use pixels and it resizes anyway. <laughs> that wasn't worth to test, actually. It doesn't really matter what unit you use, you just have to test it. Mm. Um, back to our scenario. Okay. We have okay. something that we think we know should work. It doesn't. And it's really number two that we're looking at because the code is more or less the same between these. The first one has nothing on it, so it's going to take up the full width. The second one's got a max width of 90% within its block. It's not working. The third and fourth are. What do you do now? What, what are we supposed to be doing? So I think what we're trying to do is look at it on this screen because I yeah, think they want to put it into the grey box that yeah. you don't see oh, on this screen. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, got it. Uh, okay. Okay. There's meant to be a sense. thing somewhere along here. Oh. <laughs> that would make more sense. Yeah. <laughs> I was wondering what was wrong with it when I was looking at it. Oh. Okay, but it seems that this screen is not, uh, doesn't stretch with full. It's not displayed like full. It's not part of it. It's, the, it's contrast, really. It's just, just lack. Yeah, can you change the color of the yeah. background? Yeah. Just invert the colors, maybe. Or change it. Yeah, yeah, make it yellow, whatever. Yellow is not. Uh, just the like like form background. Dark see how it's. Oh, I wouldn't do that in Star. See how it's E E. Uh, why don't you just make it sandy brown? Sandy brown. So Sand, no? Sandy brown. Okay. That's the name and the color. There we go. There we go. Oh, hey. nice <laughs> Accessibility lesson for everyone. Yes. One technique you could use is trying to isolate where the problem is. So if it should be working, uh, you could delete half of your CSS and see if it starts working, and then if it does, you know. <laughs> yeah, it, I've done that. Yeah. 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 Reordering CSS yeah. in includes also I've, really good. This is really useful when you're on third party code as well. I've um, got a site I've inherited which is nasty, and I basically ended up commenting out, I think, pretty much everything just to work out what on earth the particular thing was. It's, it's not good. Code pen is awesome though, especially if you're going to ask someone for help. Um, there's JS Fiddle, but JavaScript is not that exciting, so we want CodePen instead. Um, when you're asking for help, if you can isolate it, even for yourself, just to recreate the problem away from your other th influences. If you had Bootstrap in place and you saw this situation, how do you know it's Bootstrap doing it? How do you know it's something else? You might be using um, some library to do like some form thing, and forms sooner or later you're probably going to use a library. Um, dropping that same code into like pure isolation like this is really, really helpful for that. Um, in this situation, it still didn't help. Um, yeah. So I know this is a size defined on HTML, which you probably won't get rid of because usually it's not a good idea. You have to define your element styles in HTML by like using stuff like well, the deprecated size. I oh, know yeah. um, that's a standard CSS property. Yeah. It's oh, sorry, a HTML property. Yeah, it is, but it's not. It's a good thing to have in forms, and trust me, because I know way too much about forms, <laughs> because um, it basically gives the user an indicator of how much information they should be filling out on the form. Because I just double check in the end, it says here that size is actually visual size, not size in the sense of characters. Characters, yeah. Well, it's 
What's your source site for that? MDN. MDN. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it is a visual. Max length is the one that actually gives you a proper restriction. So the visual and the max length can be two very different things. If you've got an email field, you might have a max length of 100, char 100 characters. In practice, you probably only want to have a size of about 30. So the two are very, very important still. Visual is, is very significant. So take that MDN. <laughs> Mm. But in this case, I'm actually overriding it anyway, because this is basically a test to have something that's responsive. Is when I, um, when my screen is wide enough, I just want the thing to take up whatever size it is. When it's not, I want to actually restrict it. And this is where we're running into this problem. Um, how do we proceed from here? We've isolated it. It's still not working. Well, you have, we haven't opened the dev tools and just turned everything on and off again. That's <laughs> this is <laughs> this is the only way to do it. Just grow down the HTML path. Isn't it rewritten in CodePen at this point? Yeah. Just grow down. No, no, slowly, slowly, not so fast. <laughs> if you've got a laptop, you can play along at home. If you look on CodePen.io/cleanup. Trying to find a solution. <laughs> I think you get too fast to hit number two. Just uh, get the number two. Kill <coughs> two. Scroll down okay. a little bit. That's <laughs> very hard. Okay. There we go. The fields, as far as anyone's concerned, are one and the same, basically. Have you guys ever gone this far where you've actually had something break like this? Has anyone actually had a had a bug where they've, they've isolated and it's still failing. <laughs> what do you mean? So you've, you've gotten to this point, you know what it's meant to be doing. Mm -hmm. You've probably checked on MDN, which is a really good way of having mm -hmm. a look. Yeah. It's still not actually behaving correctly. You've got mm -hmm. it in isolation and it's still failing. So what yeah. do you do now? Oh, like as in, it is definitely you, it's not somebody else's fault. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is a good question though because you've probably stuffed up somewhere. Mm. At this point, what I'd usually do is I'd have it in CodePen, I'd check every other browser and mm -hmm. see if they're actually consistent. Oh, on that's it. a good point too, yeah. yeah. Because sometimes you're going to come across a browser bug. Yeah. And if it's a browser bug, it's a relief because at least it's not me. Mm -hmm. um, it's not a relief because then I need to actually possibly submit a bug mm -hmm. or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes it's just like a missing prefix or something. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I went through that with several lines of this really simple. I was demo. wondering if there's any other problem ever in CSS other than that one, where like, oh, this is supposed to work, but it somehow doesn't. This one's actually oh. been submitted as a browser bug. Which it is, is a browser. It is a browser bug. <laughs> it is. Ah. So if we scroll down now to the kittens, kittens, we're actually seeing exactly the same markup. The only difference, instead of a form field, we're looking at an image. And example two is exactly the same code where it's doing the right thing. Oh, you tricked us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So your next step from here, do you pick up your laptop and throw it out the window? <laughs> do you gaze into the eyes of the kitten until everything's okay? What do you do? I usually, like, if it's something like that, usually there's something like... Uh, like you just change display mode or you know put it set its position relative or exactly. add a add a, a Z index like the, these things seriously like sometimes adding that will um, convince the browser to do the right thing uh, translate Z yeah one yeah exactly yeah it, it, seriously and sometimes it that was sometimes a fix. It yeah, there's so many fixes with IE. We're not talking about that. Madness. Like, <laughs> IE is dead. IE six is gone. It's, yeah, it's gone. It's gone. My, my favorite <laughs> CSS debugging is animations and transitions, oh, and when they start flickering or not mm. doing what you want, like the that's a whole. Problems. Yeah, that's yeah. a whole different story. Hmm. Oh no, 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 not performance. Like you're, you're talking about, like it's just genuinely. Yeah, the, the oh, yeah. My, my favorite is when the in Safari the font starts becoming bolder and thinner. <laughs> Like when it transitions between graphics card memory oh, and yeah, like yeah. CPU. Well, that's it's, uh, anti aliasing. Yeah, 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 and it's just like flickering. Yeah. <laughs> where if you don't have the correct uh, transform origin and like something will half uh, animate three dimensionally into the background. I had a good but one the other day where uh, like the thing just became 100% transparent. Um, 
uh, I'd set a I'd set a blend mode on it, uh, and so, but instead of blending, it just disappeared until the <laughs> transition was over. And once the transition was over, then it was there. Uh, that was yeah. irritating. Well, this Thanks. is, I think, in anything like trying to determine the state of something when it's just it, sitting there is one thing. When it's moving around, it's a whole lot more difficult. Yeah. yeah. It's also the browser bugs are much more common there, and inconsistencies mm -hmm. in how the rendering of transitions and animations works yes. is super different in the browsers. So in this situation, we've got our browser bug. We've confirmed that the behavior is inconsistent. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, our next step is to jump onto um, the various browser um, bug sites, and pretty much every browser's got their own these days. Safari have even got one, which is good. Um, if you find it, then that's great. If not, you submit the bug, as I did with this one. Um, what do you do now? Because that's great that your thing might actually get fixed or not, but what's your solution? I'll do my own patch on yeah. Well, What's that? I'll do my own patch on Anomalize sheet. But you can't fix the browser app if you're users. But sometimes you can. I mean, you can do like a hacky sacky thing, like uh, Z index and stuff like that, and then I'll do that on the normalizing sheet instead of trying to do like patchy stuff. Oh yeah, 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 good point. But yeah. your behavior is basically a yes, this is usually not powerful enough to do poly fields. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. Can, yeah, but you don't want to. Yeah, yeah. Uh, usually, there's another solution that works. Yeah, that's it. That's basically that's your answer. Yeah, <laughs> right. Like, you basically you have, have to right here, right? completely rethink, and that's that's yeah. all the other examples are there yeah. for. Yeah. Completely rethink how you're actually trying to work it out. Yeah. Cool. Well, that's how you debug CSS. <laughs> you have any other questions? What's the bug with the big cat? Do it with the respect to see what's The cat's not cute enough? What's it? <laughs> yeah, maybe, but like... No, this is... Like, is for the spec, the max width is not set there, so it should... Yeah, yeah see, yeah, that, yeah. that's showing that behavior with nothing else on it. The, the next one is showing the behavior. Six is the one that's correct. No, five is correct also. Yes. yes. Oh, they're, they're all correct, yeah. Okay, okay. But if you scroll up... Just that the second one is wrong. Second yeah, one number two is wrong. Well, the second one, you have to put a um, uh, display block on the P and fix it. Up. Well, the inline... One, yeah, it's right yes, it does. Yes. But you shouldn't have to. You should be able to just set an in inline block and it works. Because if you have an image with the same properties, it works. But, but isn't it a field... Isn't it the default it's an display mode? I think it's going to create the width for it. Inline block is, but it's it's the child itself that's inline block. No, no, the parent is inline. The paragraph is inline. Is it? Oh yeah, you're right. Sorry, yeah. But yeah. that should it should so work. The, the it works on the image. It works on any other element except for a form field. What's actually happened with this one, and this is the really frustrating thing about what happens when you submit a browser bug, is um, there's an old South Park episode. Uh, the Simpsons did it. Basically, everything the South Park creators came up with, they found that there was a Simpsons episode that already covered what they wanted to do. Um, and the browser world works exactly the same way, except it's Chrome did it. If Chrome has the behavior, you'll get it replicated in every other browser. If Chrome doesn't have the behavior, it's not going to happen. This is not going to get fixed, ever, mm. as far as like, my bugs got rejected in every single browser. Um, because Chrome just didn't want to fix it, because they said, oh, it's always been like that, so why should we bother? But there's one caveat, because you see, yeah, your could be consistent. If, if right between HTML and CSS, you, you find the elements, they are not consistent, then you can get the same stuff. But this, this is the classic inconsistency, because number two and number six are in direct contrast with each other. The only difference is the type of element. There are no CSS properties different between them. Their behavior should be absolutely identical, but they're just not. Did, did you, like, did you say you may have to use the same class name? No, yeah, everything's exactly the same. Did your Edge bug also go close? Everything. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> even even Edge, exactly the same because comment, Ed, where Ed, Chrome yeah, haven't done because, it. I, mean, I know Edge, Chromium. like they, they have statistics on how much stuff is used in a certain way, so they could look at data on how often people actually implement yeah, this. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's, a, it's an Edge case, because most forms are terrible. <laughs> I was going to say, uh, forms are terrible when they're responsive, that, but most forms close. are terrible. We watched Chris's talk from 2014 <laughs> yeah. CSS Conf about forms. <laughs> That's true. It's very good. Very good talk. Or find me crying in a bar somewhere and talk to yeah. me about forms. somebody else's stuff forms. Ah, bad. <laughs> All right. Thank you very much. Right. Thank you. Thank you.